Now remind me again, uh, I factorized up here, like so. Once I factorize, what, what's the point of doing that? What, why do I do this? Why is that useful? To find the roots. Yeah, to find the roots, to find the intercepts. Okay, so step two is to find intercepts. Now, don't forget, there are two kinds of intercepts because there are two axes on our Cartesian plane, right? So there's the x-axis, which is the roots that we're talking about, and then there's the y-axis. So we've got a y-intercept as well. So off of intercepts here, I'm going to say I'm looking for x-intercepts and y-intercepts. There's the two kinds, okay? So, how do I find the x-intercepts? The x-intercepts are kind of easy ones. I, I did this whole process so I could find them. What are the x-intercepts? Uh, 1, 4, minus 2. Perfect. You look at the opposites of these numbers. Are you sick of me saying this yet? You're always looking at those opposites. You're flipping it around. 1, 4, negative 2. Perfect. I'm going to add on to that. It's x equals, because they're x-intercepts, right? x equals negative 1, negative 4, or 2. Fantastic. Um, there's a y-intercept. There's only one of them, which is a relief, because we've got so many other intercepts, okay? And what's really nice is, if you remember, um, again, coming back to this quadratic, right? I know the x-intercept's there. I don't need to do any work to work out the y-intercept. It's, it's, it's right there. That's the y-intercept here. It's just that constant flying off the end, right? So in the same way, the y-intercept will just be this constant hanging on the end, okay? Um, do you remember why it ends up being a constant? Why is it just, just 6 or just 8? Why is that? Because x is 0. Very good. To find a y-intercept, you let x equal 0, right? Now, if x is equal to 0, this guy and this guy, they just disappear because they're 0, which leaves you with 6. Here on our cubic, this guy and this guy and this guy, they all disappear because x is 0, which just leaves you with that 8. Okay, so y equals 8 is my actual y intercept. Fantastic. Okay. Now, we're almost there. Uh, we've got one more step before we actually just join the dots. But we've got enough information that I would love to put this onto a graph. Okay, so draw with me a Cartesian plane. <clears throat> and... I've now got four points that I know where my graph passes through, right? I've got three x-intercepts and I've got one y-intercept. That's four dots, okay? Four dots I can go through. So when you have a look at this, right? For a second, I'm just going to put on the um, x-intercepts first. So let's see here. I've got one, two, three, four. So that's negative one. That's negative four over there. And then one, two, three. There are all my x-intercepts there, so I know I have to pass through all these points. And my last one's the y-intercept. Now, I could make it the same scale as on the horizontal one. I could go 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 7, 8. But there's, there's no reason to, really. Like, I can just put that 8 kind of wherever I want, okay? So long as what results up and down is consistent, okay? So there's my y-axis, there's my x-axis. I should probably stick the origin on there as well, okay? Now, my graph has got to pass through all of these points. Hmm. How's it going to do that? How is it going to how am I going to join the dots? Is my question. Okay. Now, when you have a look at this, right? X is negative. Sorry, now I've got these backwards. One, four, negative two. Did you write that down wrong as well? I wrote it down wrong. Okay. Mine are all backwards. Let's fix that. One. My bad. Then no one else picked it up. Anyway, that's okay. Fixed. Now, I've got to go through all of my crosses, okay? By the way, just as a little note, I put crosses in because I've got loads of other marks on the graph and I, I, I want to know exactly where I go through and I don't want to confuse all these marks with each other. There's one more step that will help me a lot just for this graph and for subsequent ones as well. It's a bit of a weird word. So this is my third and almost last step. Um, it's a bit of a weird word, but it is, I think it's the best word we can use, and it's a very um, versatile word which will be useful even when it's not a cubic that we're drawing. Extremities means, like, if you talk about the extremities of the body, that's like, kind of like your hands and feet. It's the far away from the center, okay? So when I say extremities, I mean what happens for really, really negative values? What's happening over here? And what's happening for really positive values? What's happening over there, okay? All of these four points that I've just drawn, they tell me what's happening in the middle of the graph. 
But what about what's happening out at the edges? Okay, so that's another synonym for extremities, I suppose. Okay, um, just like I had intercepts, there's an x and a y. For the extremities, there's two kinds, right? There's the positive one, which is over on the right hand side, and there's also a negative one, which is on the left hand side. And I want to work out what's happening on each of those. Okay, so I want you to look again at the original graph, the original graph, right, or the original function rather. If I put in an enormous number for x, an enormous number, like a million, or a billion, or a Google, or whatever, whatever number you choose, okay? Can you see, do you remember we talked about how the leading term is the most important, okay? Because even if these guys are like, that'll be, you know, say, minus six million, and this will be minus three million million, whatever that is. But this guy is gonna be a million, 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 this term, no matter what the size of the rest of them are, this term dwarfs the rest of them. Does that make sense? That's why I keep on saying it's the most important term. Okay? So being that this guy is going to be a huge number, you've got a really big positive number, and then these little bits who are kind of making not that much of a difference. Okay? So therefore, when I put in a really, really big positive number into this, I get another really big positive number. So I'm, I'm coming up to here. That's what positive means, okay? Positive this way, positive that way. Now think about what happens for the other extremity. If I put a really negative number in there, right, like minus a million, what happens to x cubed when you put in a really negative number? Negative. That's right, it will also be negative. Do you see why? Let's actually write this out. Um, minus a million, did I get the right number of years? Yep, minus a million times minus a million, I've got to do it three times, times minus a million. Now, have a look, pay close attention to how many negatives there are. There are three. Two of them will cancel out, and that just leaves me with one of them, okay? So this one and this one will cancel out, leaving me with a negative at the front and a really, really enormous number, okay? So therefore, <coughs> over here on the left-hand side, as x gets really negative, y will also get really negative. It's going to be dropping down. Okay. Now I'm ready to go. My last step, my fourth and last step is join the dots. This is the fun part, right? Now I know all the places that I must go. I've got to start from this lower extremity. That's what I just established. I've got to come up to here. I've got to pass up through this um, intercept up here. I've clearly got to come back down. Do you see that? Like it's got to whip back down to this next intercept. I can go down through here, but then I've got to come back up to the last intercept and then race off to positive infinity, to those really enormous numbers. Okay. So here's what it looks like it's going to um, pass through to me. Let's try this. Uh, yeah, all right, something like this. <coughs> uh, use your imagination. There you go. <laughs> okay, so. Let's make a couple of um, statements about this, okay? Number one, it's one smooth curve. One smooth curve, okay? If you struggle to make one smooth curve, I mean, I, I missed the point that I was trying to go through at the first point, uh, that's okay. It takes a lot of practice to get this, and it is actually a lot easier on a whiteboard than on a piece of paper, because you've got your hand like wiggling around, that kind of thing. Um, do it with your pencil and do it lightly, right? The important thing that you avoid is don't do this. Don't think, oh, okay, I really want it to be smooth, so you kind of, kind of do this, yeah, there we go, that's like the general shape, okay? Now the problem with that is, it is the general shape, but it's not one curve, it's like 15 curves, okay? So my, my phrase that I keep on repeating is, one smooth curve, it has to be smooth, and it has to be just one of them, okay? It passes through one, two, three, four intercepts, negative down here, positive up there, and I'm finished, okay? <coughs> 